Good evening and welcome to Wednesday evening prayer from a bitterly cold white Cumbria and it's good to welcome our dear sister Sue on our live stream channel and our dear sister Paula and it's good to have you join us so this evening our prayer will obviously reflect on our special intention which is day 15 of our 40 day novena of prayer for the Frank Clara Abbey of peace and compassion in America in Finland and here so we trust and it's good to welcome Helen Francis and I pray that your nephew Anthony is, is okay and it's good to welcome our dear sister Amir and sister Mary from Michigan and I pray that Mike is feeling a lot stronger today. Good to welcome you all. So now I've lit my candle and if you'd like to light yours, that will be wonderful. And hello, brother Ron, good to welcome you too. So we light this light on this Wednesday evening, day 15 of our 40 day novena of prayer giving thanks to God for God's vision through Christ and Francis to unite all the children of God in that special sanctuary of hope. So, Lord God, we come before you and we ask you to bless our humble offering of prayer from grateful hearts. Amen. And now with our little Tibetan bells for peace we ring. And our evening prayer this evening is the Divine Office of Vespers for Lent. I hope you enjoy it as much as I have. We've been saying it now for over 40 years, 45 years. It's a beautiful prayer and it's said by all monastics, men and women, in the Catholic Christian world. So let us begin, O oh God, come to our aid, O oh Lord, make haste and help us. Glory be to the Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus Christ, our teacher, to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end, amen. <clears throat> and our hymn this evening, is a hymn that was composed by St. Gregory the Great, who crossed over in 604. Now let us all with one accord, in fellowship with ages past, keep vigil with our heavenly Lord in his temptation and his fast. The covenant so long revealed to faithful men in former time Christ by his own example sealed, the Lord of love in love sublime. Remember, Lord, though frail we be, by your own kind hand were we made. And help us lest our frailty cause your great name to be betrayed. Hear us, O Trinity sublime, and undivided unity so let this consecrated time bring forth its fruit abundantly. And now, for our first antiphon for this Wednesday evening. Your ways, O God, are holy. What God is great as our God? And now we have... Sorry, I rang the wrong, I read the wrong antiphon. I stand corrected. We are waiting in hope for the blessings of the glorious coming of our Saviour. And our first reading is Psalm 61. And we're going to read it from Psalms now by the Reverend Leslie Brandt, an American pastor. Listen to me, O God, listen to what I have to say. From the bowels of this fractured world, I cry out my fears and my longings. I cannot find peace or security until I lose myself 
in something or someone that is greater than I. Draw me more deeply into your life and purposes. Only then will I find shelter from the tempests of this fearful and uncertain existence. You know that I am committed to you, and as I am so committed, I have inherited the same divine promises that are given to all who follow you. Grant to me the grace to fulfill my pledge of loyalty and service, and I shall never cease to sing your praises. And now for the Gloria. Glory be to the Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus Christ, our Teacher, to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We are waiting in hope for the blessings of the glorious coming of our Saviour. And the second antiphon, let God bless us. Let his face shed its light upon us. And now we read Psalm 66. And again, we're going to read it from Psalms now. Psalm 66. And if you have the book, it's page 105. <clears throat> it is high time we start making happy noises about God that we boldly proclaim his name and shout his praises. We already know what he has done throughout history, the great deeds he performed, the people who witnessed them and worshipped him. Let us recognise as well what he is constantly doing for us. He draws us into the crucible of conflict he tests and tries us in the valley of pain and sorrow. He allows us to taste the agony of affliction. He gives our enemies permission to oppose and oppress us. And then he uses these very things to, pu to purge and prepare us for his purposes. Now I renew my pledge to my God. I strive to carry out those promises I made to him when I cried for his help in my troubles. I yield up to him my life as a sacrifice of thanks offering. You who are seeking for God, these are the things he has done for me. He has accepted me despite my sins and failures. He listens when I cry out to him, and he responds with solace and support. I proclaim God's praises because I know that he will love me forever. What a beautiful song. We pray the Gloria. Glory be to the Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus Christ, our Teacher, to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let God bless us. Let his face shed its light upon us. And the third antiphon, all things were created in him, and he holds all things in being. Our next reading is a canticle reading from St. Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 1, verse 12 to 20. Let us give thanks to our Father Mother God, who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of their beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. He is the image of the invisible God, 
the firstborn of all creation, for in him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. <clears throat> so we now pray the Gloria. Glory be to the Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus Christ, our teacher, to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. All things were created in him, and he holds all things in being. <clears throat> and now, our short scripture reading, and it's from Paul to the Romans, chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. My brothers and sisters, I implore you by God's mercy to offer your very selves to him, a living sacrifice, dedicated and fit for his acceptance, the worship offered by mind and heart. Adapt yourselves no longer to the pattern of this present world, but let your minds be remade and your whole nature thus transformed. Then you will be able to discern the will of God and to know what is good, acceptable and perfect. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the short responsory, I said, Lord, have mercy on me. I said, Lord, have mercy on me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against you. I said, Lord, have mercy on me. Glory be to the Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus Christ, our teacher, to the Holy Spirit of God. I said, Lord, have mercy on me. And the Magnificat Antiphon, do not judge and you will not be judged because the judgments you give are the judgments you will receive, says the Lord. <clears throat> and now I invite you to join me for the beautiful canticle of Mary, the Magnificat. My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, who is my Saviour. He looks on his servant in her lowliness. Henceforth all ages will call me blessed. The Almighty works marvels for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. He puts forth his arm in strength, and he scatters the proud-hearted. He casts the mighty from their thrones, and he exalts the lowly. And he fills the starving with good things, and he sends the rich away empty-handed. He protects Israel, his servant, that's each one of us here, as he promised to our fathers Abraham and his sons forever. Let us together pray the Gloria. Glory be to the Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus Christ, our teacher, to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now, <clears throat> and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Do not judge, and you will not be judged because judgments you give are the judgments you will receive, says the Lord. 
And now we come to our evening intercessions. But first, just excuse me, I need a drink. <clears throat> Thank you for that. <clears throat> Let us praise God, our Father, Mother, who hears the prayers of their children and grants what they ask. Response, Lord, have mercy on your people here. Lord, on Sinai, you gave the law to Moses and completed it through Christ. Write your law in the hearts of all men and women that they may be faithful to your covenant. Response, Lord, have mercy on your people here. Help us to create a community where people care for one another. Let us work together for the good of all. Response, Lord, have mercy on your people here. Strengthen missionaries with their, when their courage fails. Send them helpers to gather in your harvest. Response, Lord, have mercy on your people here. Remember our brothers and sisters who rest in your peace. Make them sharers of eternal life. Response, Lord, have mercy on your people here. So now <clears throat> we come to that important time in our sharing together. And in the presence of Christ, in the Blessed Sacrament behind me, I want you to have courage and to use your most precious gift from God, your free will, and invite, invoke, and call upon our God, a God who has many names and none, but call on the Christ, the Good Shepherd, to come to you and hear your prayer. And if you have any requests, it doesn't matter whether they're big or small, name them, bless them, and release them to Christ. And the secret, leave them with him and just keep giving thanks to God in a mindset of gratitude. So let us reflect now for a moment as we call on the Lord Christ and we ask him to come to us and to speak with us and just sense his peace, his love and his joy. And I dedicate this to you, my brothers and sisters. Close your eyes while the summer clouds release their silver glow and the evening rain makes patterns on the road. The world is clean and evergreen. Close your eyes. Close your eyes, let the moonlight lay his hands upon your head, and the silence hold you like a feather bed. Let the day just melt away, close your eyes. Let them go, we'll build a dream together, you and I, tomorrow. Close your eyes, let the sound of nature lullaby your mind, in the pools of 
twilight leave the world behind come with me to ecstasy close your eyes broken dreams that drift away like bubbles in the sky let them go Dear friends, I would like you to just be still for a moment and just imagine the Lord, the beloved, the Good Shepherd, wishes to come and embrace you. He's waiting on you to accept his invitation so that he can come and embrace you as you are a beautiful child of God. Just sense those healing arms, the strength of his presence holding you, loving you, just like a mom holding her newborn child. Jesus is caressing you, the beloved child of God. And he knows what you're going through. He knows each step you take. He knows your down days, your happy days. And he knows when you go through the dark night of the soul. And all he's asking, will you allow him to love you? And bring back into your mind, your body and your spirit, spiritual wellness and wholeness. Let us sit in his presence, knowing that his arms are around us. Feel his love. There is no greater love than to be in love by the beloved. And with each in breath you breathe in. Breathe in that love. And allow that love release from your mind all fear, anxiety, negativity, worry, and come back to your heart, the gateway to your soul, for your soul is the gateway to him, to God. And I want to bring this evening Sister Sue's son, James, who thankfully was released from hospital and is now resting. And thankfully, it wasn't a heart attack, although he did have tightness in his chest, but obviously he's got heart failure. 
So we send love, light and blessing to James and to Kath, her friend and her other friend, Wilf, who are both terminal. We bring all our brothers and sisters in our community who've dedicated their heart to God for unity and peace in the Cathedral of God, the landscape. We bring our dear sister Paula as a mom who's obviously concerned for her youngest son, Lucas, who's having to do his compulsory army training. And Lucas obviously is disappointed for them extending another three months on top of six months. So we send Lucas all our love and the strength not to allow the enemy discourage him. And we pray for Kaj, brother Kaj and his eldest son, Marcus. We pray this evening for my dear friend, sister Jane in Ormskirk who phoned me today with good news that prayers have been answered and that the chronic pain in her knee has responded to your prayer. We pray for God's children in Syria, that the United Nations will be able to deliver more food, medicines, and warm blankets and clothing with water. And we pray for a cessation to all the bombings from Russia and the Syrian government. But we pray for the children of God all around the world, where many of our young people are disheartened, discouraged, and where many are taking their own life. We pray for those on death row and we pray for that foiled attempt where they tried several times to end a man's life in America and it was a botched job where they couldn't find a vein. So they tried many times to inject the lethal injections, but they discovered that he had peripheral shutdown due to being a drug, a former drug addict. What an experience it must have been for him lying there. We pray for that system. We pray for a humanitarian, compassionate response. We pray this evening for all travelers here in the UK. We're now on red alert because of the severe snowstorms and the dangers of black ice. It's quite bad up here in Cumbria, where parts of the motorway from the next exit on the M6 right up to Glasgow is closed. And many of our hill farmers, bless them, that are coming into the lambing season, we pray for them attending to God's flock. But we pray for the elderly and the vulnerable who rely on their district nurse or Meals on Wheels or their home help. We pray for them to be safe. But we pray for the whole family of God. I pray for Gabrielle in Montana, for Krista and her family. I pray for Sister Meredith and Brother Paul and Brother Brian in Georgia. I pray a prayer of gratitude from my heart that God called you by your name and you came as God's prayer partners for peace. And now I want to pray for those of you on Facebook. Who have we got with us? Oh, there's quite a few. For dear Paula, for Helen Francis, and for your nephew, Anthony, for Amir, for your sister, Gronya, for Myra, 
and Corey, your friend, and Myra's little boy, for Sister Mary and her husband Mike, and pray he's not as depressed today. We pray for our dear brother Ron and his family and grandchildren. We pray for Adam C. McHenry. We pray for Grace. Let me just see, Anthony is still on life support. Oh, we will hold Anthony in our prayers. God love him. And we pray for the doctors and nurses caring for him. For dear sister Magdalena, and Sister Rita, her twin sister, and for their own health issues and for their family. For Mike, who's here with us, and for Ray, and for Gregory, good to welcome you to this table of love. Prayers for a young man, a foot surgeon, who has just been told he has six months to live, and his name is Tony. Oh, let us for a moment just stop and reach out to one another, take hold of each other's hand, and let us come to Christ and say, Lord, we ask you to lay your healing hand on Tony and his family and on Anthony. Lord, we thank you for hearing our prayer. I ask a prayer that people may, be, may pay more attention to others in need. I agree, and for the elderly. But I want to pray for all our religious leaders, that they unite and become one voice for God, instead of many falling out with one another through dogma, through fear, but I pray for His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, and for Thich Nhat I pray for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, our reigning monarch, and a good woman, who's head of the Anglican Church, both here and abroad. I pray for His Holiness, Pope Francis, and for the work he does and the pressure he's under he is a good man and he needs a lot of prayer. But we pray for the men and women of all faiths who've surrendered their heart to God in ministry, be it as a rabbi, an imam, a priest, a monk, a nun, a vicar, a swami, a lama. We pray for them and the good that they do for God. So let us now Bring to the Lord God our gratitude as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. <clears throat> our Father, Mother God, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give to all of us here and all whom we have remembered in prayer our daily bread. Forgive us our disobedience, our stubbornness, maybe our unwillingness to be led by your Spirit. Forgive us the times when we must process in our head before we allow our heart listen to your voice. Lead us not astray, but protect us from the Antichrist and from the barrage of evil forces that seek to lead us off our path. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So be it. And our closing prayer. <clears throat> bear, bear with me. You teach us, Lord, to discipline the body for the good of the soul. Give us grace to refrain from all sin and to set our hearts on fulfilling your precepts. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus, the cosmic Christ, who lives and reigns with you 
and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And that brings us to the end of the Office of Vespers. And now <clears throat> for our beautiful prayer given to our Sister Mary here by the Holy Spirit. And it's for our friend Clara Abbey of Peace and Compassion in America, in the UK and Finland. <clears throat> I, Sister Mary, in Christ Jesus believe, so lack of finances for the Franciscan centuries of hope, be you removed in the name of Jesus. Father, Mother, God, we come to you in praise and thanksgiving for the dream you gave to our founder your dream of Franciscan century of hope. We pray it will be a century of hope with a warm heart, an open mind to call all people out of darkness and lead them to the divine spirit. A century of hope that heals hurts, hurt lives and helps all people. A sanctuary of hope that leads us all in the way of peace. The peace of St. Francis and St. Clare of Assisi to serve Father Mother God, the poor and marginalized. A sanctuary of hope that knows no division of culture, class or race. A sanctuary of hope that embraces the vision of Jesus and Francis to embrace all beliefs and none. A sanctuary of hope that welcomes brothers and sisters of different faith communities dedicating their lives and their hearts. As lay monastics embracing Celtic, Franciscan spirituality. A sanctuary of hope of the masters for the people high as the ideals of Jesus, and low as the humblest human. And a loving sanctuary of hope and friendship to the animal kingdom, and a sanctuary of hope that inspires courage for this life and hope for the life to come. Let us pray. We put this in the hands of our Father, Mother, God, in the hope of St. Francis and St. Clair interceding for us. And we read the quotes from scripture. When summer returns and the roses are again in bloom and God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. And the two quotes are from 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 8 and 10. And we thank our dear sister Mary for being open to the Holy Spirit to receive that for the Teo community. And we just say, Lord, give our dear sister the strength to be able to continue to support her dear husband, Mike, who isn't a well man. So now our closing blessing. Father, Mother, God, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks and praise for your blessing, for your healing touch to our mind, our body and spirit. And we thank you for taking care of Anthony and Tony and for James being returned to his mom and for all our requests that you've heard and already granted. Amen. So be it. So, my dear friends, go in peace to love and to serve our God. Namaste, shalom, inshallah, pax et bonum, om shanti, solo di caritas, 
Salam Alaikum, and may the peace from the Son of Peace and the Queen of Peace be your peace, because you are called by God as God's prayer partners for unity and peace, and I know He will bless you. He will bless you. Till we meet again around this table of love. If you're here in the UK, please keep warm. We're in for a shocker tonight. The beast from the east, they're calling these winds from Siberia and from Portugal. So we say, Lord, Amen. Amen.